It's Monday again in the ever ongoing saga of how gray is Miss Thompson's hair getting. It's getting pretty bad. It's pretty much white right now. Okay, so we're going to continue what we were doing on Wednesday with the arithmetic and geometric sequences. So we're going to use the same formulas. So real quick, arithmetic. Okay, they change by addition, right? Okay, remember it's got to be the same number every single time. And geometric, okay, they change by multiplication. Okay, so make sure you guys got that. Okay, so we got our two formulas that we need to use. Okay, so our arithmetic formula was a sub n equals a1 plus d times n minus 1, right? Okay, so a1 is the first term. D was the common difference. Right, and n is the term number you're looking for. Okay, so if I'm looking for the 40th term, 40 would go in for n, all right? Geometrics was a sub n equals a1 times r to the n minus 1 power. The only thing that's different is what we use r for, okay? So r is going to be the common ratio. Same idea. It's what you use to change from one term to the next, okay? So if I give you this sequence, it's going to be 11, 15, and 19. And it's going to say find the 28th term. Okay, so what you can do is you can figure out the difference and go all the way out to the 28th term. But what if I ask you to find the 50th term? Okay, that's going to just take too much time. So let's do this the easy way. You guys are always trying to find shortcuts. This is a shortcut. Okay, so the first thing I want you guys to do is find out, is it, is it arithmetic or geometric? Okay, so remember, arithmetic changes by addition, addition okay, or subtraction, and geometrics change by multiplication. Okay, so I like to start with arithmetic first. My brain goes there first. From 11 to 15 is plus 4, right? Is from 15 to 19 plus 4? Yeah, okay, so that means this one's arithmetic. Okay, so that's good because you need to know which formula to use. So now that I know it's arithmetic, I'm going to use this formula right here. Okay, so a sub n equals a1 plus d times n minus 1. Now, I already know what d is. D was positive 4, right? A1 is the first term, which is 11. And then N, I want to find the 28th term, so that's going to be 28. Now, if you want to do this the right way, which it doesn't really matter, guys, but I want you to understand what's going on, okay? This N over here is that same N over here. So this might say A28. That means I want the 28th term. Okay, you don't have to worry about that. This is what you're focusing on right now, though. But I want you to see that so you understand what the notation might be. So I need A1, which is 11, plus D, so that's 4, times 28 minus 1. Okay, you can distribute this, guys, but work smarter, not harder. Do that math. So 11 plus 4 is 27, right? So then we're going to do 27 times 4 which gives me 108, so 11 plus 108. That means the 28th term is going to be whatever 11 plus 108 was, which is 119. Got it? All right, let's try another one. Right, so 3, 1, and 1 third. Okay, so again, first thing you want to do is figure out is it geometric or is it arithmetic? Okay, from 3 to 1, if I use adding and subtracting, this would be minus 2. Okay, well, from 1 to negative or 1 to 1 third is definitely not my, minus 2. Sorry, I had a hiccup. So that means it's going to be geometric. Now, it's geometric, you got to find R. Remember, you do the second number over the first number and reduce it. So this would be 1 over 3, okay, and it already is reduced, so we're good, all right? Then we need A1, which is 3, okay? We're going to find the seventh term in this one, okay? So n is going to be 7. 
Now, I will tell you this, the directions on Delta Math say to round to the nearest thousandth. Okay, that's three decimal places, guys. Okay, so make sure you round it properly. Don't get them wrong just because you didn't round it correct. All right, since it's geometric, we're using a n equals a sub one times r to the n minus one power. So I need a one, which is three, times r, which is one third, raise it to the seven minus one power. Okay, remember, you have to do exponents first, guys. You gotta take care of this first, so don't do three times a third and knock that out, right? So we gotta do this stuff first. So three times a third to the sixth. Bust out your calculator. So one over three raised to the sixth power, okay? And then we're gonna multiply that times three, and we'll follow the directions on delta math, so that way you guys got an idea. So it says rounded to the nearest thousand, so three decimal places, one, two, three. Okay, look behind it, that's a one, so this stays, so your answer for the seventh term would be 0 0.004. Okay, pretty easy. All right, I'll give you another one. I want you to try this one on your own. So 20, 15, and 10, and I want you to find the 25th term. Okay. Remember, figure out if it's geometric or arithmetic, which formula you need. Then you need A1, D or R, depending, and then what term you're in. So pause it and give it a shot. All right. All right. This one happens to be arithmetic. From 20 to 15 is negative 5, and that's negative 5. Okay. So that means D is going to be negative 5. Okay. I need A1, which is 20, and I need N since I'm trying to find the 25th term, which would be 25, right? Okay, so we got a sub n equals a1 plus d times n minus 1. So you got 20 minus 5. Remember, that's got to be minus 5 because it's a negative 5 times 25 minus 1. Okay, so 20 minus 5 times 24. Okay, now what you really have is negative 5 times 24, guys. Okay, so negative 5 times 24, which gives me negative 120. So that means it's going to be 20 minus 120. And then we got A25 equals 20 minus 120. So your answer is the 25th term is negative 100. Okay. Next one. So eight, six, and nine halves. Okay, so pause it and give this one a shot. Oh, wait, don't pause it yet. You need to go to the, let's go to the sixth term. And we're going to do nearest thousandth. Okay, now pause it. All right, so those of you who posed, welcome back. Those of you who didn't, you just watched me adjust my shirt. All right, so a sub n, okay, so geometric or arithmetic, you got to figure that out first, right? Okay, so from 8 to 6 is minus 2. From 6 to 9 halves is not minus 2 because, you know, 6 minus 2 is 4, so that's not right. Oh, the cranes are here, Okay. And so we're going to do 6 over 8, so this is geometric, which is going to give me 2 goes in each of these, so 3 fourths, right? All right, so A1 is 8 times R, so A1 is 8, R is 3 fourths, N is going to be 6, so we're using A1 times R to the N minus 1 for those of you who like to know things. Okay, so 8 times R, which is 3 fourths to the six minus one power, right? So eight times three fourths to the fifth. I'm gonna do it on this calculator for those of you using this one. Okay, so three over four raised to, there's your exponent button on this calculator. That's the same as that other blue one, okay? That other TI one. So raised to the fifth power, enter, and then times eight 
Okay, so if we're going to go to the nearest thousandth, so one, two, three, behind that's a four, so it's going to stay. So your answer is going to be a sub six is 1.898. Okay, now I just want to show you one last thing before I set you off and you stop watching. Please be very, very careful. So 9, negative 18, and 36. Okay, and we're going to find the 11th term. Okay, this is geometric. So I'm going to use A1 times R to the N minus 1. So I need A1, I need R and I need n, right? So a1 is nine, okay? r, we're gonna do negative 18 over nine, which gives me negative two, right? And then n's gonna be 11. All right, so we got nine times negative two to the 11 minus one. So nine times negative two to the 10th power. Okay, everybody stop for a minute. Negative two squared, okay? Let's do this. Negative 2 times negative 2. What's negative 2 times negative 2? That's 4, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Guys, that's negative 8, right? Be careful. If I do negative 2 squared, I get positive 4. If I do negative 2 to the third, I get negative 8. When you raise a negative number to an even power, the answer must be even. Now, why am I telling you this? On this calculator, I need to do negative 10 to the 10 or negative 2 to the 10th power, right? If I do negative 2 raised to the 10th power on this calculator, I get 1024, which is fine because it's a positive number, right? We just said if it's even, it's going to be positive. Okay, even exponent. Okay, so that that number is even, not this number is even, that number. Okay, if it's an odd exponent, Okay, so three is odd, right? Then the answer is going to be negative. Now, again, why am I showing you that? Let's look on this calculator right here a second. Wait, I've got to turn it back on. Okay, so if I do the same thing and just do negative two raised to the tenth power, this time I get a negative answer. Okay, be super careful on your cell phones, on this calculator, on that other blue one, the other TI thirty one that's blue or green or pink, whatever it is. Guys, if you're going to do this, you have to put the negative 2 in parentheses. Negative 2 raised to the 10th power gives me a positive number. So please be careful with that. All right, so watch that. So I got 9 times 1,024. So times 9, the answer to this would be 9,216. Okay, so be very careful. Okay, let me just show you the delta math ones real quick so you guys can see it's the, exactly what we just did. So here they are. Okay, so the first three terms of a sequence are given around to the nearest thousand if necessary. So again, you're going to look at these numbers, okay, right there. You're going to figure out if it's geometric or arithmetic and then decide which formula you can use, okay? So new problem, same thing. Figure out if it's arithmetic or geometric and then figure it out. And then all you're doing is putting the answer in. You don't need to put a sub n equals or a 23 equals or whatever. Just put the answer. Got it? Okay. Hopefully this was short and sweet and to the point and you guys got what's going on. All right. I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye.